Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I'm panicking, I'm panicking. Okay, I'm all right. If you're looking for the cheapest way to get into a Tesla, you've got two options. Number one, you can look for the lowest price new version, or you can look on the second-hand market for some of their older vehicles. But which is the best option and why? Welcome to the Faster Project. <laughs> oh my goodness! Can I, please, can I drive? No, please. Planet Earth is in trouble, and we need to transition to sustainable transport faster. So today, myself, Rick Bullamere, and leading battery electrochemist, Dr. Ewan McTurk, are checking out the Tesla Model S versus the Tesla Model 3. Pricings from £48,595 in the UK, or €61,091 in the Republic of Ireland. Battery options are 57.5 or 75 kilowatt hours usable. That gets you between 235 and 300 miles of range per charge. That's 376 to 480 kilometers. Performance starts with a 239 kilowatt motor with 420 newton beams as a torque, which moves the Model 3 from 0 to 60 in between 5.8 and 3.1 seconds. Charging takes the form of an 11 kilowatt onboard charger and up to 250 kilowatts via CCS. In contrast, the used Model S starts at about £30,000 in the UK. The most common battery variant for the used ones will be about 85 kilowatt hours. That gets you a solid 200 miles of range per charge minimum. Rear wheel drive variants have a 235 kilowatt motor with up to 440 newton meters of torque. There are either 11 or 22 kilowatt onboard chargers, and the vehicle can supercharge or, via CHAdeMO or CCS adapters, charge at up to 150 kilowatts via DC. Now, Elon Musk set out to raise the bar with the Tesla Model 3. But would it overshadow the Model S, a car that has been around for many years now and still way ahead of much of the competition? And we thought we'd investigate whether Ewan and I should make the upgrade to the Model 3. Oh, good. Oh. So Ewan and I have brought two incredible electric vehicles to the banks of Bonnie Bonnie Loch Lomond here in Scotland. We've got the Tesla Model S and the Tesla Model 3. Yes, Rick, and what we have here is a brand spanking new version that you could buy today versus the Model S used a mere 112,000 miles young. But yeah, how do they compare? This was the original kind of car for the masses from Tesla, but it was still quite pricey, whereas this is the genuine car for the masses judging from how well these have sold these are the best selling electric car in the world nice now this is ewan's tesla model s and it is a fantastic car i have one myself and absolutely love it to bits but what drew you to the tesla model s so believe it or not this was actually the cheapest electric car on the used market that had at least a 200 mile range that i could i could afford at the time and yes, it did mean saving up a, a fair few pennies. These cost about £30,000 second hand at the moment. They were slightly cheaper before prices went do lally, hence, uh, hence why this is on my driveway just now. But it was a case of something that could do the distance, something that could supercharge very quickly, something that would be reliable, something that ideally had lots of creature comforts and could just, you know, could just chew up motorway mileage, no bother. And it has certainly lived up to that. We've already seen the front space because you were sat in it a few minutes ago, but um, should we have a, a quick look inside? So, Ollie, come on in and have a look at the amount of space that you have right in here for all sorts of stuff. So you can get a decent sized suitcase in here. It even goes oh, yeah, it extends right back here. Beyond, doesn't it? So because this is the rear wheel drive only version, there's no motor up the front. What you have is the skateboard platform. So you've got the batteries down low, and then you've got the, the motor in the rear. The all-wheel drive version also has a frunk. It's nowhere near as big as this, but this is absolutely cavernous. And as you saw earlier, you can fit a person in it if you want. Yeah. Or your kids if you don't like them. 
So one of the big bonuses of electric cars is they are very low maintenance. The only things that I've found I've had to spend a lot of money on are mine of the tyres because I've ragged it because I'm an idiot. Uh, secondly, the door handles. True, the, the door handles are the kind of the Achilles heel of the Model S. They are over-engineered in a way because yes, they are retractable like so. And because, particularly with the driver's door handle, that's constantly going in and out and in and out, there is a base, basically a wire with a piece of solder that's constantly doing this, and that eventually breaks off, and that means obviously that the door handle will not work from the outside. Let's just test as well, because a lot of people worry that when it retracts, what if your kid's hands are in, or fingers are in, in the retractable door handle? Come and have a look and see if this actually hurts. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my body on the line here, are you ready? I'm only kidding, it doesn't hurt at all. But yeah, so there you go. Um, if you've got kids, don't worry about losing fingers. Um, also worth pointing out as well that with regards to that common door handle failure issue, Tesla, you said they came out to your house to fix yours, they'll fix it on the driveway. That's one of the big advantages of Tesla. They have the mobile ranger service for things like that. That said, they probably have charged you about 400 quid to replace the entire door handle assembly. Whereas you can go to a third party expert like Cleveley EV Mobile, they fixed mine on my driveway for a fraction of the price. Because as I said, it's only a little relay and a little bit of solder. And that's all it takes. You can have the door off, fixed and back on again in an hour. So this is a 2015 model Tesla, mine's 2014, so yours is a spring chicken compared. The only other thing I've noticed is a little bit of buildup of, of water in there, which has led to a bit of moss. But apart from that, pretty good. Yeah, exactly, it's, it's trivial really. And then beyond this, of course, is the absolutely cavernous boot, which is filled with all sorts of detritus at the moment. Did that open when you said boot? No, 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 I had the key in my pocket. <laughs> anyway. It's a nice little magic trick though. But what I can tell you from experience actually, is that this boot will swallow a fully grown border collie with the parcel shelf up. So yeah, it, the, the boot extends right back. It's a very deep boot. I've never once run out of cargo space in this car, despite my best efforts. It's massive. Sorry, I know this is very distracting, but I need to show the, the extra smuggling bay under here. Oh yes, yes, this the ducats. Oh, so look, oh my goodness, absolutely destroying your car here, but come and have a look at the amount of space in here. You can get an idea there. I, there's so much space in here, I'm literally knee deep in this boot, so you can fit scooters and pack lunches and maybe golf clubs, probably not. So actually, whilst we're in the boot ducat that has all the various adapters and things, Tesla is a rapid charging omnivore. It will plug into just about any rapid charging socket you can get in Europe. Right, let's start with the boot of the Model 3. Room for lots of bags, clapboards, more bags. It extends really deep again, doesn't it? It's, it's very similar almost to the Model S, with the notable exception that this is a saloon and not a hatchback. So, gimbals. Hang on. We need to check under here. Oh, yes, true, true. Wow! Do you know what? Look that's, at the size of that! That's the first time I've seen that. It's absolutely massive. Yeah. Wowza! Loads of room. Okay, I didn't even realise how much boot space you got in the back here. Because you've got no various engine necessities, you, you've got all you've got all this room here. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay, I'm stuck. Don't panic. I'm panicking. Uh, I'm panicking. Okay, I'm all right. I'm coming. I'm, ah, I did my wrist. Let's talk about the door handles quickly because they've changed this on this model. Push in there. Pull out there. And you're in. Yeah, and it's a button to exit on the inside, isn't it? Oh yeah. Yeah. But if if the button fails because uh, it does, which I don't think it would do, you've got a, a, an extra release there just in case. Ooh, welcome to the interior of the Model 3. In terms of stuff other than the computer that this car is built around, because Teslas are basically computers on wheels, the interior of this, these seats are so comfy. Oh so my goodness. Comfy. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, the ones in the original Model S were fine, but this is just so nice. And I like the fabric, I like it's, it's a full leather, isn't it, as mm. opposed to real. My first electric car was a Tesla, a Tesla Model S, and this is a Tesla Model 3. And I just cannot find a car that I enjoy driving as much as this. It's 
just cool. Everything works. The tech is brilliant. The performance is unbelievable. And when I sat in it today for the first time, it just felt right. One thing though that's worth pointing out about this is obviously we've been playing around with this basically you know this this landscape mounted iPad um, because we're parked and we're able to pay attention to this but try doing what you were doing there whilst you've got your eyes on the road whilst you're driving there's nothing there's no physical buttons that you can feel for and go yep that's definitely the you know the demister for the windscreen and so on that is a, a concern for me as is the fact that there's not a screen immediately behind the steering wheel so you're always kind of glancing over a little bit. Design wise they've gone really minimalist inside this because you've got one great big monitor here which controls pretty much everything. You've also got little, little buttons and dials here which help you to turn up the volume and activate the uh, voice commands but I do miss having the monitor here. Can I have it back please Elon? And I've, I've seen people as well, um, Ollie, one of the cameramen, said this must be a nightmare to keep clean. And, he's, and he's, he's right, but I have seen people pour red wine on this and just wipe it clean. So Absolutely. And see him on a magic. Yeah, and I mean, the interior is available in black as well if you want to be boring. But this is just lovely. I really like this. Then again, it is, you know, an OCD nightmare if you do get a little bit of a stain on it. Um, in terms of the, the rest of the car, yeah, you've got this, this ducat here. Uh, and then underneath your, your phone rests there are USB ports so you've got wireless charging here or you can have conventional USB charging if you prefer. There's another uh, ducat here for snacks and so on. A ducat? Um, a ducat, yes. Wasn't yes, he in Star extent. Wars? So not only can you make each different seat in the car do a Donald Trump but you can also put it on your indicator so when you indicate it never gets boring. Okay, how do I turn this off? Oh, actually, you've got your 12 volt socket in here as well, so oh, that's pretty handy. Oh, there it is, I've been looking for that. Yeah, yeah, and obviously your cup holders, really useful uh, sort of center tunnel here. In comparison to the Model S, which has your cup holders behind the slidey armrests, and then there's just this kind of barren desert of nothing until you get to the screen in the center console. And I know that there are aftermarket uh, products you can buy that will stick into that kind of vast barren desert, and then you can have kind of ducats like this. Obviously charging an electric car is something that might put you off uh, going electric, but the bonus with this is it's got Netflix. So you pull over, charge your car, you can catch up on Ozark and Peaky Blinders and whatever you want to watch. Oh, Drive to Survive, that's very good as well. And another problem that the Model S has that the Model 3 doesn't. No door bins. Yes, no door bins. And well, coming from a Nissan Leaf before it, no sunglasses holder in the roof. It's actually surprisingly devoid of cabin storage space but that said it makes up for it with an obscene amount of storage in the front and boot so yeah you know you win some you lose some let me just draw your eyes to this it's like a, an ipad protector rather than a so it is. flappy yeah. oh look at that's this panoramic back. roof as well oh well yeah that's yeah that's a slight thing to overlook isn't it yeah that is <laughs> all the way back Unfortunately, because it's all the way back, once again, bugbear, it's not a hatchback. The Model Y is, though, but it's obviously more expensive. But yeah, lovely roof, to be fair. Right, let's talk about the sat-nav, because this is better than any other car I've driven so far. It uses Google Maps, it's easy, it's intuitive. The auto, when you, when you talk to it, the voice recognition, really solid. And I've not found anything better than the Tesla navigation so far. Let's quickly run through some of the, the, the bits and bobs that, that you can do on here. So obviously we've got the, the map here. I love the map, I think it's really intuitive. But if you click here, it gives you all the different controls. And for me, charging is gonna be one that you use quite a lot. Um, if you just explain how this works, Ewan, for the people that have never driven Tesla. Yeah, good shout. Uh, the Tesla is one of the EVs that's far more kind of open about how much of the battery it can actually use. So quite often with electric cars, you'll find that, well, as we've been discussing, they have the actual capacity of the battery and then the usable capacity. They block off that top and bottom few percent, and that helps to prolong the lifespan of the battery pack. With this, you can take that even further. So you've got your daily mode, where it's a sliding bar that goes between 50% and 90% of the battery's capacity. Uh, so, you know, it, for day-to-day -day use, especially in a vehicle that has well in excess of, of 220, 240 miles range, considerably more for the bigger battery version, the long, wheel, uh, so the long um, distance version. You know, that's, that's perfectly fine for day to day. If you are going on an epic road trip, you can go into trip mode, which takes it all the way to 100%. 
which is mirrors damn it 100% of the actual capacity of that battery. But it's recommended you only use trip mode when you really need to in order to preserve the lifespan of the battery. Wicked. And when you're talk, you talking about long trips, autopilot, well, not just long trips, even if you're stuck in traffic, autopilot is so good. Absolutely. Click the button, sit back, relax. Mm -hmm. when you get up and get out and get off. Right, welcome to the Tesla Model S. Now this is your car. It is a fantastic saloon version of, a, of an electric car. But tell me quickly, what are your thoughts on the, the main center console and, and some of the bits that work well in this car? So yeah, I mean, the, the Model S was the first to have a properly huge center console and the Google Maps based sat nav is incredibly intuitive, easy to use, generally quite responsive. The, the later MCU2, which you can upgrade into that car, is much faster, admittedly. So this is the 2015 Tesla Model S. This one, despite having 112,000 miles on the clock, is still capable of a solid 200 miles of motorway mileage per charge. The free Spotify account for older Model S's is uh, very beneficial. It's made sure I've never got bored on a long road trip. Um, one of the key features versus the Model 3 is the fact that you actually have a screen right in front of you that's displaying your speed and traffic information and so on rather than having to glance away. I do prefer that and it would have been nice if Tesla had included an option in the Model 3 or Y for that too. In terms of supercharging, this, because it's one of the original Tesla Model S's, has free supercharging for the life of the car. Beware that if you buy your second-hand Model S direct from Tesla, they may have removed this free supercharging privilege. Supercharging typically takes about an hour, but that said, bearing in mind that you're getting that electricity for free on a supercharger, I really can't complain. Let's just quickly talk about the autopilot because I've not found a car that can do autopilot as well as my 2014 Model S and we're in 2022 now. Exactly, yeah. Everyone else is still playing catch up at the moment. Tesla have been at this for absolutely ages. There are sensors all the way around the car. So if I flick one of the indicator style stocks behind the steering wheel a couple of times, keep my hands on the wheel, the vehicle is now driving itself. If I take my hands off the wheel, it's steering itself around the corner. It'll navigate around corners, it'll know what the speed limit is and it'll stick to that. If you want to overtake, you flick the indicators and it will do that for you. It's a very clever machine. Round about kind of busy town centres and things, but this level of autopilot isn't quite up to it and it would freak out and go, no, nope, no, nope, you're on your own, mate. But for out on dual carriageways like this, it really does take the stress out of driving and it means that you arrive at your destination feeling quite refreshed. This is actually the original version of Autopilot, so it is quite basic in comparison, but it's even that was, was revolutionary for its time and I think that most automotive manufacturers out there would kill to have the original Tesla Autopilot because, what the, as you've said, no one's really kind of caught up with that yet. And you do see a lot of taxi drivers like Go Zero, a, a full uh, electric fleet using these as taxis for, I guess, because they're super low on maintenance and really cheap to run. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, that said, the Model S, we've talked about the retractable door handles and things. There's more to go wrong with a Model S than there is in a Model 3 or most other EVs. But that said, there's a heck of a lot less to go wrong in a Model S or any other EV than there is in an internal combustion engine, petrol or diesel. They will all, these electric cars will all be more reliable. And that just means that for taxi drivers, where time is money, if they're not on the road earning, if their car's in a garage that you're know, getting repaired, then they're missing out. That's why electric makes sense, plus they're saving a fortune in fuel, as well as maintenance. Beautiful. Well, electric is the future. I, I've got to say, I'm a massive Tesla fanboy. I think they've done a fantastic job. And whether you think that the, the build quality isn't up to scratch or, or, or whatever you think you, is a reason not to get Tesla, I, I disagree. I, I just love it. I think they're great cars. They've done an, an, an incredible job. I'm, I'm distracted because we are doing a car review, but the Arnold Clark crew are over there throwing axes at targets, and I think we need to have a go. Are you Absolutely. up for it? Oh yeah, let's do this. Let's okay. do this. I feel a wager coming on. You ready? Mm -hmm. Let's do it.
we had a lovely drive out to Loch Lomond today. Ewan was in the Model S, I was in the Model 3. But the big question is, Ewan, would you be persuaded to change your Model S for a Model 3? I'm torn, I'm genuinely torn. I didn't think I would be because the Model 3 is a saloon and it's annoying because the boot is huge, but I, I, I need a hatchback. I'd much prefer a hatchback. But that said, this car somehow manages to be more minimalist than the Model S but has more useful non-electronic features. Just the way that the cup holders and the, the door bins and everything are, are, are laid out. It's genuinely more convenient. And the seats are so comfy, so comfy. And it charges faster on DC. If only it had the option for dual onboard chargers, just like the Model S. There's elements of the Model S that are done better by the Model 3, but there's elements of the Model 3 that are done better by the Model S. But there was no monitor in front of the steering wheel. I really missed that. Yeah, same here, same here. Having to kind of glance over periodically. And the fact that, just like with the Model S, there's arguably too much emphasis on the touchscreen rather than actual physical buttons as well, which is an annoyance when you're trying to keep your eyes on the road. Having said all that, and I didn't think I would say this, but I would trade in my Model S for a Model 3 based on today's driving experience. Wow, I mean, I, I am still very, very much on the fence, but I am teetering and I've honestly got no idea which way I'm going to fall. Well, I think we're both in agreement that they are both great cars, though. It all just comes down to very subtle personal preferences. So we've probably uh, asked more questions than we've answered in this episode. But genuinely, both are phenomenal machines. If you're looking to get a Tesla on the cheap, then test drive both. 100% agree, and if you have been watching The Fast Project, we hope this has answered a few questions and has encouraged you to make the switch to an electric vehicle. This project has been supported through the European Union's Interreg 5A programme.